the last Sunday of every April is Worldwide Pinhole Day. And it's a day to celebrate essentially just a tiny hole in a box. Every year there are events that are held all around the world promoting pinhole cameras and pinhole photography. I was invited to one of these events and I said, sure, I'll go. And then I realized that I didn't own a pinhole camera. I was too cheap to buy one, but I remember that one of the greatest things about pinhole cameras is that you can just make them out of anything. All you need is a light tight container, some film on one end and a tiny hole in the other. Now I didn't want to make an entire camera, so I did some research and I just found out that you could add a pinhole to a body cap and call it a day. Behold, the aperture pinhole. Now this is made out of an aperture mechanism from some lens and I lucked out because most other aperture mechanisms I fished out of a uh, lens has a hard mechanical stop that prevents you from cranking down on the aperture. But not this guy. You could push down real hard and force it into a pinhole. Slap down in front of a camera and you are good to go. And the results? They look terrible. I mean, kind of worked out. I had all these potential ideas on ways to improve this, that, and the other. And I told myself that by the next pinhole day, I'm going to come up with something better. And then I promptly forgot. A week before the next pinhole day, I was scrambling. But then I found this. This is a Mamiya RZ67 back, but specifically, it is a 220 back. But for those unfamiliar, 220 film is just 120 film, but twice as long and with no backing paper. Nobody's making 220 film now, so the prices of these standalone 220 bags have plummeted, and I was able to pick up a pair of these for next to nothing. So I had to do some terrible things to this back to make it work, but at the end I ended up with this. Yeah, that's an F mount on a Mamiya RZ67 back. And after you mount the lens cap pinhole, you get this. Now at this point, I was very proud of myself. And then I used it. I didn't do a whole lot of research when it came to pinhole camera designs. And it was only after the fact that I realized that the field of view is dependent on how close the pinhole is to the film plane. The closer the pinhole, the wider the field of view and the pinhole was very close to the film plane, which resulted in this. Another issue that you see is that there are a lot of light leaks that are going around uh, the edges. This hole that I drilled out for the pinhole is too small, and that's what you're seeing in the pictures. I'm pretty sure if I could just carve out some of this plastic, it would probably help out a lot. <laughs> What was supposed to be a one-off project has sort of mutated into this monstrosity. And I think I need help. <laughs> 